Hello and welcome, today I'm going to show you how I created isometric turn generator. Quick disclaimer, I used my engine for this project, which has zero documentation whatsoever, but I use it very little, so I hope it's still fun with you. One night I was having a small talk with my friend over here, and he showed me his project in isometric projection, and I was like, oh yeah, I want to do something similar. So I did. So at first I had to create a cube, and it was a relatively easy task, although my approach on it was pretty terrible, it still worked. To place our cube in correct position we need to change word coordinates to screen coordinates, and with help of this video, after some time I was able to get it right. Then to make our word infinite we need some chunk system, it was pretty easy to implement, Nah, just joking, of course they were possessed at first. What I had to do to render chunks correctly was to take camera position and convert it back to the word coordinates. It might sound simple, but because I am an idiot, I absolutely didn't understand how it worked. So I did a little bit of math and now I have those two functions that work perfectly fine. And with help of that my chunks finally weren't possessed. Then I clearly forgot to take my medicine that morning because I instantly got carried away and started creating some funny looking sine waves. And then I found a way to add color to them with this function over here and I think that looks even fancier. Ah, how little I knew that was the end of nice things. Going back to the project, first thing I did after I took my medicine was adding noise that I stole from GitHub. And as you can see, it totally didn't work, so I left it for now. At this time, I got a bright idea how to optimize my blocks. Hear me out. I had to draw three separate structures just to draw in one cube. And if you know how computer graphics work, you know that it is 18 vertices in total. My optimized version of it was based on drawing a square, which uses only 6 vertices in total, and texture on top of it. And believe me or not, it saved me a lot of RAM. Then after a bit of head scratching I fixed how noise function work, and now we can see some terrain variants. After that I tried making terrain more interesting and water level consistent, but for some reason it was flying. And the funny part here is that it took me about an hour to figure out why does it fly. Then it was mostly playing around with noise to get right values and figuring out why does the water fly again? After getting water right again, nah just joking, I had far more flying water incidents than this one, so drop the music. What's up with this water? I have no idea what's going on. So after finally fixing the water, I added this little animation to it. And although it looks cool, it drains your CPU to death. But we do not care about that. Then it was nothing fancy, just adding some colors to our terrain. Everything was looking too plain for me, so I added grass. And then I started adding trees. Oh boy, the trees. So I had pretty much no idea what am I doing, and my beloved trees looked like giant popsicles. So now I had a war with trees. But after some time I figured out that I was trying to achieve three-dimensional shape using two-dimensional equation. So after fixing my mistake, now I have nice looking spheres. Then I added flowers and some tree variants. I 
I really didn't like idea of moving camera using keyboard, so I have stolen this cursor from h.io and made camera move by drag and drop. Then I added the ability to zoom in and out using scroll, and for me, the project was complete. Quick disclaimer here, I didn't bother to unload chunks, so this program basically can eat your whole RAM, and the code is mostly a pile of garbage, but if you want to take a look at it, there is a link to GitHub in description. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.